gon' slide. We gon' chill. What up? We here. We back. You already know what it is. Luca! We in the building. You already know what it is. I, I, I got a special guest with me today. I got a special, I got a special guest on me today. But before I let my special guest talk, Luka Doncic, you saw what he did. He went to Staples Center. And he shut that shit down. It's Luka World. But before we go ahead and we hop into this, this is Hoops and Brews. Yes, if you don't know, this is Hoops and Brews. Yes. And yes, the color on your screen is right. Yes, my hair is a different color. Drop your jokes. Most fire joke. I'm going to put that in my two for one special. I might even let you Skype into the motherfucker. But shout <laughs> out to you. Shout out to my special guest, Eli. You are in the building. Talk to the people. Let the people know who you are. Welcome to Hoops and Brews. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, some of you may know me. Name is Eli. I'm the LA Sparks PR director. Um, but we're going to talk NBA today. Prior to that role, I did some journalism myself covering both leagues, the men's and women's leagues. So excited to kind of get back into some NBA analysis. Um, and I just got to give a shout out to Hoops and Brews because they, they've been hustling, covering the Clippers and the Sparks. Hey, thank you, man. And uh, they're doing good work. So I know, you know, when, when they started, it was fun. There was yeah. some hot takes that went viral, but these guys are actually grinding and reporting and getting out to games and talking to coaches and players and at the end of the day you know that's what it's about so i'm excited to hop in and might be a little rusty here but i did coach as well so i'll try to bring a little bit of all that you can hoop as well talk to the people there's there is actual footage of this man hooping me and pavy to the moon on our youtube channel go to youtube.com slash hoops and brews look up my private hoop sessions <laughs> And you will see this man, Eli, giving us work. Talk to the people about your basketball yeah, skills. Yeah, I don't, I don't about look. About your training skills. I see you on Instagram all the time. What's your Instagram? Instagram is the same as your Twitter? Yeah. All right, perfect. Drop that one more time so that way they can remember it's, that. Uh, Go I'm, follow Eli. I'm at Coach Horowitz 13. My first job out of college was coaching varsity high school girls. And then I coached high school boys in a year at Caltech, which is D3 men's. Mm -hmm. So... I don't look the part, but I got kind of that J.J. Barea, yeah. Ginobili type of game. Ginobili! Shout out um, to Chuck. Yeah, so, yeah. What All right, cool. So, as always, this is Hoops and Brews, where we drink beer and we talk basketball. Today, we are not drinking beer. I actually have to cover a Clippers game in about three, four hours. So, I'm just sipping on a very light uh, uh, beverage of uh, Patron and Gatorade. You know what I mean? I got to go cover the game later. Um, so that'll be a fun experience. The Clippers are going to bounce back, hopefully, um, versus the Wizards and get that W. We're going to talk about them a little bit later today on in the show. But shout out to everybody watching us live on YouTube as well as everybody listening to us live with the flavor in your ear on Dash Radio. We appreciate you all as well. If you're listening to us on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on, on, on Apple Podcasts, on iHeartMedia, if you're listening to us on Player.fm, everywhere you're listening to us in the world, shout out to you and thank you for joining us on Hoops and Brews. It's your boy TPJ. As always, find me on Twitter, on Instagram at RealTPJ. We drink beer, we talk basketball. As always, if you are under the age of 21 or 18 in Canada, you better not be drinking. Don't do it. It's wrong. My mama told me to stop saying that word, so I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But anyways, let's go ahead. Let's hop into this NBA action. Obviously, um, you know, as you entered, you know, you know, the studio, uh, you know, Luca uh, was was setting a blaze Staples Center. They hopped out, you know, to an early lead. Luca. Came out, dropped damn near another triple double. Um, you know, um, you know, they say I'm the Luca hype man, and I, and I, you know, you know, whatever. So I'm not even gonna let you start. Um, um, you know, and, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna even start. I'm gonna let you start. That's what I meant to say. I'm not gonna start. I'm gonna let you start. So go ahead. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone that doesn't agree that Luca's a top 10 player in this league. I know okay. you've been riding the hype train of number one, so he's number one right I'm now. down to debate that, but I, I mean, I'm with you that he's an elite player and mm -hmm. the Suns and Kings should be getting more criticism. 
really? you know, really? we're passing on him. I'm saying really? the draft, yeah, right? I know. He goes number. Th- well, he really technically went number five, right? In the trip and traded. Yeah. So no, I think he I don't went know if you're three, didn't he? He went three, but it was a trade. Oh yeah, so for Trey Young. Yeah. For Trey Young. So I don't know if you're the Kings and the Suns, you've got to be just kicking yourself over and over, right? I mean, or do you not see it that way? As far as I Aiden mean, and Bagley, I mean, I, I don't, when you could I, have Luca, who looks like it looks like right now, Giannis and Luca are the future. Like in five yeah, years, yeah, they are. Those are going to be the yeah. best two players, and yeah. you could have had that. I mean, Giannis is already one of the best two right. players. I personally think I still I don't think LeBron is better than Giannis anymore. Here's my one thing on Luca and slash Harden. Yes, my, this is the one thing I've been telling you though. In the playoffs, I feel like when a guard. Now I know Luca's a bit taller, so you He's could call him a win. Five. But I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Harden is six five, Luca's six seven. Go ahead. These types of players, my fear is in a game seven of a conference finals or semifinals, they can be double teamed and schemed against. You can't scheme a Giannis, a Kawhi, or LeBron. They're too big, too strong. Mm-hmm. But Harden and and we'll see with Luca because he hasn't been in the playoffs. But you you can double team those guys and get the ball out of their hands and. I, I don't know. I mean, Harden hasn't been able to do it in the playoffs. Luka might be different, but that's why I would. That's why I wouldn't put him as number one like you, only because he's just not as strong and big as Kawhi, LeBron, and Giannis. I mean, and, and he is a negative on defense still. He's not horrible, yeah, but he's not. You know, he is. He's a negative on defense. So, I'm with you that he's a top maybe five, seven player, but number one, I'm not quite there yet. So, in terms of the Mavericks, what do you think about the Mavericks? Do you think that this team can actually make some noise in the playoffs? Currently, they're like, you know, teetering between the fourth to the sixth spot. Obviously, Phoenix is, you know, after that hot start, come back down to reality. Minnesota's come back down to reality. So, now the Mavericks are actually in kind of the driver's seat in terms of them being able to control their own destiny as it pertains to making the playoffs. What are your thoughts on it? And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you my Mm -hmm. Opinion, because I want to make sure that the guests have enough time to talk. So that way, when y'all say TPJ, you talking over oh, the guests? They say I'm you giving the guests. I'm giving the guests enough time to talk. I'm giving everybody enough time to talk. So when it, uh, when I get ready to talk about Luca Dodgers, it ain't gonna be no disruptions. Go ahead. Oh, they say you hog the air. No, nah, they don't say I hog the air, but they just say that we always talk over each other. So I'm oh, trying to. So good. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give it more of a of a cadence. That's why I be. I usually <laughs> when I'm ready to just be like I disagree with that. I'm just gonna hold it and I'm gonna wait. So go no, ahead. Do you? Do no, you? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think the Mavs are for real. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I predicted that before the season. Yeah. Obviously, I was in my season with the W. So yeah. I I I'm now getting back into like watching it more regularly. Um, but. I think they're for real. For one, Rick Carlisle is a phenomenal coach. Yes. Definitely a top 10 yes. coach, maybe third, a top five. Third highest winning coach in NBA history yeah. behind Doc Rivers. He's, and he Greg won Carlisle. a ring, and it yes. wasn't like a cheap ring. It yeah. was beating a better team. Yeah. With um, JJ. With, with JJ, JJ Barea. Barea. With JJ Barea on LeBron. <laughs> yeah. On LeBron. Um, I think they're missing like a clear third score. Obviously, yeah. you have Luka and Porzingis as yeah. your number two. And I think to. I think they'll fall short of like the conference finals or finals because you need a third guy. But I think they could make the Western semis. They got a lot of great role players around them, a lot of athletic yeah. guys that get boards or are unselfish. Um, but I think they need like one more piece. And I don't know if, I mean, you may be following it closely. I don't know, is that something they can get this year? Yeah. Or you maybe wait and, yeah. don't, and don't no. rush it? They have, you know, in terms of their books, they have a fairly um, decent amount of cap space. Like they, They've never been like a prime free agent market. Um, so because of that, they've, you know, their books are fairly clean. They have movable contracts. I even, you know, kind of looking at their roster. If you do want to bolster their roster, I do think a guy like Tim Hardaway Jr., who I said was better than Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, I apologize. I was wrong. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr. has been supremely disappointed. And not just because I it, it, okay, look, and I know a lot of people say, yo, like you overrated the man. It's not that I overrated him. I just looked at his game and Donovan Mitchell's game, and they have the same game to me. He's just less athletic than Donovan Mitchell is, but he can shoot better than me than Donovan Mitchell could. I thought he was going to take a leap, especially in his offense, because all he get, all he would get, all he has to do is play defense and make open shots. Do, how does Finney Smith come in and take your job, bro? Right. Like, how does Finney Smith come in and take your job? So, by the way, they have yeah. Dallas is the number one offensive rating in the league right now, and the number four net rating. So. 
they're obviously legit. You know, it's yeah. not just Doncic. I mean, you know, fourth in net rating. I mean, yeah. that's all you need to know to say they're gonna stick around in this playoff race. Yes, I agree. I think that you know, even looking at a team like the Blazers, you know, they you know got off to a ter- a terrible, terrible start, you know, for the season. But even looking at them, they're slowly creeping back up in that Western Conference standing. So. I do think that the West will, you know, like the cream will start to rise to the top in the West. And I do think that the Mavericks. You think they're part of that. And I do think that the Mavericks are a part of that. I mean, even. Yeah, they're 13 and 6. I mean. Yeah, I mean, mean, that's a great record. I probably would have thought that they would have been, to be quite honest, if I was was thinking about it, I probably would have guessed that they would have probably been like 11 and like. They're 13. I thought they would probably be like 11 and 8. At yeah. this point, through you know, you know, through the season, if I would have you know guessed it before the season, right? And also, but sorry. you make a point. There's, <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> sorry, there's team. You make a good point. There's teams like the Blazers <laughs> that could kind of bounce back. They've had some injury stuff, but yeah, if you look at the standings right now, there's six good teams in the West: the Lakers, yes. the Nuggets, <coughs> the Clippers, the Mavs, the Rockets, and the Jazz. Minnesota's ten and nine and in seven, so it really drops off. Yeah. So. They have some breathing room, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they could, they could have a slippage and still be yeah. like in it. So they're yeah. in a pretty good. They could, and they do have a top fifteen, uh, you know, defense as well in terms of points allowed. But, anyways, me personally talking about Luca, what you saw in that game and what you're gonna continue to, I'm sorry, what you're gonna continue to see from Luca Doncic is that he is everything that I told you guys he is gonna be. He is better than LeBron. He is better than LeBron was now. He is better than LeBron was when he was 20 years old. And if you're telling me that LeBron was better than him when he was 20, you're lying to me. LeBron was not out there giving you 30, 9.6, and 9.5. He wasn't. I'm sorry. He was not. He was not out there also going out and beating the team that had the best record in the NBA. Now the Lakers are tied with the Bucks for the best record in the NBA. The Lakers were 17-2. and Everybody said that they hadn't been playing anybody. Well, if you look at the Lakers schedule coming up, they actually have some competition ahead of them that they're going to actually have to play. They play the Nuggets coming up. They just play the Mavericks right um, you know, right now. Then they also have the Clippers coming up in terms of Christmas. They also play, um, let's see, who else do they play? They also play Utah. They play Portland. They play Minnesota. Then they play Orlando. Then they play Miami. Like, like the Lakers still have a fairly tough schedule yeah, ahead of them. Yeah, they've had a kind of an easy schedule. And I feel like this is the beginning of all of that slippage. The Lakers are going to finish December with probably a record of like 21 and I would say 12. I think December is going to be a rough Ooh. month for them. And I think that what you saw tonight and what you're going to continue to see from the Lakers is that they struggle against teams with good perimeter play. And what does Luka do? He plays well on the perimeter, but he also can get to the free throw line. He's better than LeBron. He can shoot better than LeBron. He can rebound better than LeBron. The only thing that I won't say that he can do definitely or definitively yet is pass better than LeBron. But he's damn near a level below him because I actually we've had, what, 17 years of LeBron passes? You know how many goddamn passes that is? Give Luka 17 years of passes. Luca, we in the building. We are coming for the MVP. Giannis, you my son, the freak of the East. But it's either going to be the freak of the East or the white knight for the MVP. They're going to battle it out. Remember, I told you, I've been telling you since last year, Luca Doncic is coming for you. I remember when y'all told me earlier this season, Trey Young was better than Luca Doncic. Trey Young team lost by 50 more than twice in the same goddamn season. Stop it. You're disrespectful. Stop disrespecting the white knight. We in a building. <laughs> Luca world. Luca world. Luca! Let's move on. Let's go ahead. Let's actually talk LA Lakers. What are your thoughts on the Lakers so far as a basketball team? How do you feel that they stack up in the West in terms of their finals potential? Or even just in terms of their playoff potential? Well, I mean, obviously today's lost, but they're still 17-3. and three. I've been impressed. They're right now they're fifth in offensive rating and second in mm-hmm. defensive rating and second in net rating. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the defense really that's impressing me. Mm-hmm. Um, people kind of made fun of the coaching hire, right? Because they yeah. like failed to yeah. lock up multiple people. But this Vogel guy has them defending. Yeah. And Vo- remember, Vogel coached those Pacers teams with Roy Hibbert yeah. that went to the Eastern Finals. So I think he knows what he's doing. He has him defending, and then on offense, he's smart enough to knock it in LeBron's way. Yeah. And um, I think you're right. The schedule's been a little bit deceptive. I still think the Clippers 
have a higher ceiling, but I think I think they look like a team that's going to make the Western Finals Do for you sure. Think Anthony Davis can win Defensive Player of the Year this year. I mean, he's been he's been a monster this year on defense. So far this year, Anthony Davis as a whole is giving you twenty six point one points per game, nine point two rebounds, three point five assists, one point five steals, and two point eight blocks per game on, on only two, on, I'm sorry on only two point five turnovers per game. And he's only and he's only fouling two point four times a game. He actually has a higher PER than LeBron this year. What are your thoughts on Anthony Davis in terms of Defensive Player of the Year? Um, you know, for the Lakers, obviously, I feel like LeBron is starting to get into the mode now that I think that he knows that this Lakers team is going to be good. Where he's starting to lobby for guys for awards, and yeah. you know, as a guy that do, you know that does PR teams and and and, and, and such. They do lot before awards. I mean, as, as everybody does. They do in Hollywood, too, shit. I mean, you see the billboards. For your consideration. I mean, you might not even seen that show, but you saw the billboard. But even when you're thinking about that, I feel like Anthony Davis is a guy that's in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. What do you feel is his ceiling with this Lakers team defensively? And also, how do you feel about, you know, kind of his him and Dwight in the same, you know, kind of front court? And how do you think it matches up? you know, defensively against perimeter guards, which they seem to struggle against. Yeah, I think he has a good shot because, like you said, it's not always about who's the, like, with these awards, it's not always really who's the best or who's the most deserving. Yeah. A lot of it's the narrative, right? Uh -huh. So if LeBron starts pushing Davis now, 20 games in the season, and then the L.A. media starts picking that up, it becomes, like, part of the narrative. Yeah. Um, you know, he's kind of playing the four, even though he doesn't like to admit yeah. it because they're starting McGee and, as you mentioned, Howard's yeah. playing. So I think... The reason I would say he, he may not deserve it is because he's not really playing center, right? Is yeah. It's McGee yeah. and Howard yeah. that are actually like the yeah. center fielders or however yeah. you want to call it. Yeah, actually, that's a he, great so argument. So his role isn't – he's not having to clean up as much. He's a great defender, and I think he deserves to be in the conversation. But I would argue like a Gobert or an Embiid, they're truly playing center – having to play in that pick-and-roll defense, yeah. having to guard the rim. Davis is getting to kind of relax a little bit more on some fours, but the counter-argument might be he does have to do a little bit more in help defense, right? Because yeah. the center can kind of just stay under the basket. So there are certain matchups where he's going to have to play more help. So, yeah. I mean, he's a hell of a defender, and he deserves to be in the conversation. I don't think he's as good as, like, Gobert. Yeah, he still has to guard but, guys like KP. Um, right. And, you know, you, know, you know, like Porzingis, he's still on a night would have to guard a Giannis. Um, depending upon who's who he's getting matched up with on the Clippers, he would probably be in a matchup against a Kawhi or still in a matchup against a Montrez. Like, those are still tough matchups for you to have to deal with in the West. Even Whiteside, I think, you know, occasionally he would probably be matched up on Whiteside. It's funny now that Melo's back in the league. Actually, we got to talk about Melo because I want to know what you think about Melo oh, later. Oh, no. Um, but, and, but, and, and in crunch time, he probably yeah. will play center, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, they don't really yeah, play Howard or McGee with I mean, two minutes left in a close yeah, yeah. game. It, de it, de it depends on the matchup. Um, but also, I mean, what McGee doesn't play late in those matchups, but I do think that LeBron in those instances, um, AD... Green, Bradley, and Kuzma will probably and LeBron. be on the floor. Yeah, so, so AD's going to be the center. So well, that's what we got to yeah. see now in these. Like yeah. you said, we got to see now that they're playing better teams. Yeah. Like how does Davis do in close games? Yeah, playing D, but he's definitely he's definitely in the mix. And I think like the Go Bear, the narrative's probably a little tired on him, mm -hmm. right? Because he's yeah. won the last couple, or yeah. at least you know, yeah, it was kind of like Kawhi won a few, and then people were like, all right, we got to give it to someone else. Yeah. And then Draymond Green won a few, and then yeah. it's like, okay, let's give it to Go Bear now. I think maybe it is Davis's turn, so to speak. Yeah, and in terms of opponents, I mean, in terms of win shares, although I'm not like a huge analytics, uh, you know, fan, as you all know, I mean, technically LeBron does have a higher defensive win share percentage than Anthony Davis does. So even looking at that matchup, as you said, McGee and those guys do probably take away from that a little bit. Um, I'm, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, are you surprised they're playing so well with the two center lineup? Like, I think a lot of people going into the season were like, Davis needs to be the five. They can't play like a McGee. Or even when they had Cousins or Howard, like, people were like, that's not going to work. And it has. No, because a no because no because you can give AD the ball on the perimeter and, and then basically have him, like, ISO the post up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he can dribble up right. a little bit and be able to get the ball from the three line get it down to the mid post and then literally turn around and shoot. Like even, you know, Marcus Smart, he had an article that he dropped in the Players Tribune and he was talking about 
the hardest players you know you know he's ever had to guard. And Anthony Davis was one of them. He's like he literally turned around and shot over me, and there was nothing I could do about it. My hand couldn't even right. get up that high. But people were worried. I think the other center would clog his space, and yeah, that hasn't seemed to be the case. But, but they won't really clog his space because of the fact that because of, like I said, you can he can catch the ball in different spots on the floor. Like Kevin Love is not a guy that that has point guard dribbling skills. Right. Anthony Davis is a guy coming out of college that everybody loved and you know really liked because they said that he could dribble like a point guard and then he had that growth spurt and became 6'11". Yeah, he so was he a can, point guard in high yeah, school. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. So he can dribble, dribble versus Kevin Love, he couldn't dribble, dribble like that. But even Chris Bosh, if you saw Chris Bosh on the floor with LeBron and Joel Anthony, it still worked in terms of spacing. Right. It's the same type of sets that they probably run as he ran with Chris Bosh as they run with AD right. sometimes because it's probably easier to get him the ball in those spots because you know LeBron has to like occupy one spot on the floor. Right. And and again in crunch time yeah. they won't have to. But also what you've been seeing out from the Lakers is a bunch of um lobs. You've been seeing a ton a ton of lobs, but go ahead. No, I was gonna say shout out to Evanston High School Daniel Poneman who discovered Anthony Davis as a sophomore. He was a six four point guard at Prospectus High School and then as a junior was a was six eleven. That's pretty crazy. Yeah that's pretty that's pretty damn gnarly. Shout out to A D man, <laughs> Chicago legend. Um, shout out to that man. But anyways, um, in terms of the Lakers, you know, I, I'm looking at this team and, you know, as I said before, I think that the Lakers are going to finish, the, you know, you know, the month of January. What are they? I, th- I think they're 17 and three right now. 17 I think they're going to, f- I think, I think in January, okay, I'm not going to say that they're only going to, you know, they're going to finish 21 and nine because then that means that they would lose six games. They probably have more than six games in December. I think they have 16 games in December. So I'm going to say that the Lakers' record for the month of December is probably going to be, I'm going to say 500. I really think that they're going to be wow. 500. And I think, but, but I think that that's 500 for them is still good. 500 for the Lakers is like 8-8 eight and eight for the month of December or, or like 7-6 and six or 8-8, eight and eight, whatever. That still will put them at 25 wins and 11 losses. Right. Getting ready to get ready to get, you know, gear up into the All-Star break. That still puts them well above, you know, you know, 15, you know, games above 500. So I don't think that, you know, it's going to be doom and gloom for the schedule. But I do think that they are going to get tested a lot. And when they get tested, you are going to really see the true character of this team and what they can do. Because I don't think that they can defend as well as people think that they can defend. And I think that they will get exposed, in, um, you know, as the season progresses. And as I said, as the cream starts to rise to the top of the crop. In the West. Well, you didn't. I'm looking at their schedule now. You listed the teams with eight of the nine or eight of their next nine games on the road. Yeah, that's a lot. And uh, that's a lot. What one thing though? I that's a lot of games. What are your thoughts? I don't really trust their supporting cast. I, I know they're either. playing well, but I hate to say it, but I feel like they they do have a lot of players that are on the wrong side of their prime. Like you're relying on Bradley and Rondo and. A lot of guys that, you know, it's typical of LeBron teams of the past. Yeah. It's like a lot of veterans that he has relationships with. And you compare that to, like, the Clippers role players. And I think, I don't know. I mean, they're playing really well. So you got to give them credit where credit's due. But I'm worried that those guys won't be able to sustain what they're doing. Yeah, no, I agree. I said the same thing to Pavi. I said, I don't know if the Lakers will, you know, have a, you know, uh, a formula for sustainable health but also a formula for sustainability with these older guys because I do think that they are going to start to fall a little bit more in and out of rhythm, which is why like a guy like KCP is big for them and they need a guy like him to like actually start to play well. He does have some of the most mind-boggling plays that I've ever seen from a basketball player. <laughs> On a you know on a professional level, he's like, frustrating. Yeah, he's 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 more frustrating to watch than J.R. Smith, and I and I love J.R. Smith. I think <laughs> J.R. Smith's one hell of a player, but KCP is way more frustrating to watch than J.R. Smith. Um, and I have faith in him, but he has to pull through for them. I don't think that Avery Bradley is really gonna be the guy that they need in the playoffs. I think that guys like Luca, guys like Harden, guys like Westbrook, guys like um, Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum. All of those guys are going to be able to have their way with them. I even think Jamal Murray, even though he ran a clock out the other day for no – did you see that play with Jamal Murray caught? No, I missed Yeah, it was at the end of the game. Um, I forgot who they were playing. Uh, they were uh, – who were they playing? Oh, the Kings. They were playing the Kings, and Jamal Murray caught the ball with like four seconds left, and he literally had like a three that he could have took, but instead of taking a three, he ran under the basket trying to look for a pass, and the time expired, and they didn't get a chance to shoot the ball. 
and the game was over. Yeah. So like I still think, but I still think every Bradley is going to struggle against that guy. Um, so I mean, looking at that, I mean, we'll see, you know, kind of what it is, you know, from that perspective. But I do think that the Lakers are in a good position. I do think that they will make the playoffs. I'm not, I'm, I on, you know, earlier this season I said, you know, depend. Well, it, it's it's in, it's injury dependent because the same way you say you worry about those guys because they're older and their talent, I worry about them because of their health. You know, what I mean, Avery Bradley's already had what like a fractured leg. Rondo's been hurt. Um, Kuzma is been a, playing better yeah. without Bradley, though. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think he's kind I, of I like a little Car- bit overrated. I, I like Caruso actually. I think I, you know, I will apologize to all of y'all out there <laughs> that you know, you know, when I said that Alice Caruso couldn't play defense, he can play defense. He does play solid defense. I was even watching him on that play when Luca was bringing the ball up the court, um, and then he was just like dribbling from the top of the key. He couldn't get past him. He knocked the ball out of Luca's hands, made Luca take a long three, which he just kind of threw up like a, you know, you know, like a long layup. Um, so I do think that he's a solid option for them. I just wish he would just go ahead and just shave his head, man. Go full Bruce Willis, bro. Come on, Alex. Alex Caruso got to turn into Bruce Willis. That's what I want to see. But anyways, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Let's talk about the next thing, um, which is the Raptors, man. What are your thoughts on the Toronto Raptors? Um, they really haven't missed a beat since missing Kawhi. Um, I've seen them in person, you know, versus the Clippers. Um, they're a very impressive team. Fred Van Vliet is very, very impressive. Pascal Siakam to me in person is much more impressive than I, you know, kind of like, you know, the one, you know, the one thing I will say about covering the teams versus when we first started doing this and we were just getting faded and doing it for whatever is that you really do get to see the true kind of like uh, not only character of like some of these players, but you also get to see. um Oh well, okay. Um, you also you also get to see the true characters of these players, but you also get to see you know just kind of like how big and how actually like humongous of human beings these guys are. Like I remember when I first like walked in a locker room and I saw this man Giannis. He was literally just like laying on the ground with like a phone thing rolling, <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, this mother like he's huge, like literally huge human being. So even seeing Siakam in person, I'm like, yo, this is a big guy. So if, even if you Draymond Green or Kevin Durant or Klay Thompson, and you got to deal with Siakam, you know, it came out that Klay Thompson was actually 6'5", right? Really? Draymond Green is 6'5". Uh, uh, Kevin Durant, you know, was you know was out there on a bad calf and tore his Achilles. Like, Kevon Looney had a hole in his chest from Kawhi Leonard, like, shoulder and the man going to the basket. Like, Siakam's a big guy. Um, seeing the Raptors this year in person actually really did let me know why they actually did win the championship last year. And although I've said many a times that I think that a healthy Warriors team would have beaten the Toronto Raptors, and I still believe that, I do honestly believe um, you know, that this team is a good team and that they were a good team with or without Kawhi Leonard and that they're a good team because they are very well coached and the system – that their coach runs and that Nick Nurse runs puts guys in positions for them to be able to succeed. And you can see guys like Van Vliet having a career year when Kyle Lowry goes down. Norman Powell the other night versus the Orlando Magic uh, had, I think he had like 24 and a quarter or 14 and a quarter, something like that, going insane. They just play well as a team. What are your thoughts on the Raptors? Big fan. I tweeted this weekend, I think, that they will make the Eastern Finals. Okay. And I haven't yet picked... Right now, I have my conference finals as Lakers, Clippers, and Bucks, Raptors. Uh-huh. I still got to watch a little more. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not in a position that I had to make a preseason pick, so I can. Yeah. Um, but a few things about the Raptors: fourteen and four. Obviously, record matters. At the end of the mm-hmm. day, you know, like you said, you can talk analytics all day. The most important stat is wins. Do you win? And they're second place in the East. Yeah. Um, as far we won't go too into analytics, but I've been saying they're. They're sixth in offensive rating, third in defensive rating, and there's only five teams that are top ten in both offense and defense: Lakers, Bucks, Raptors, Clippers, Celtics. Okay. Those are the five teams that are top ten in offensive and defensive rating. Okay. So that's a good indicator. And like you said, like Eli coming through with the stats, they have no no Lowry right now, no Ibaka, and they're yeah. still shredding teams. And and it's scary. W- their defense is awesome, and like you said, like they have guys now that I think. We didn't realize they were stars because they were playing behind DeRozan before and Lowry and then Kawhi. But, you know, Siakam's a star. Powell is not a star, but he's dropped 33 the other night. He yeah. could be. They're, like, he, we haven't really yes. seen yet. They, 
they are up. I mean, well, they were up by 40 on the Jazz at halftime. 77 right. 37. The game on. Yeah. yeah, and then, yeah I mean, we're and watching then, it right now, but when you see this right. tomorrow on Monday or you hear it, like, they were up by 40 at halftime versus Utah. Right. We got to talk about them Jazz and fans then, a little bit later. Let's get it. Go ahead. And Ananobi was out last playoff, so we kind of forgot about him. Yeah. He's a defensive star yeah. in, the, in the making. And Gasol's not played very well this year, and he's going to play better. His defense has been good. I hope he does. Yeah, I mean, and then who are we? And that again, that's not even with Lowry, right? So if they're doing this without, you know, in yeah. theory, their best player, or you might, I guess, Siakam now is probably yeah. their best player. But I, I don't know. I mean, if if they play the Bucks in the conference finals, the Bucks they're gonna start sweating a little bit because they're gonna remember that they were up 2-0 last year and lost yeah. four in a row. And the Raptors are kind of playing with house money, right? Nobody oh. expect them to repeat. Yeah, yeah, but the only difference is, is that last year Kawhi Leonard was guarding Giannis Antetokounmpo. They have no one right. to guard him this year. Like Kawhi but, but stepped up to, and Ananobi. I mean, Ananobi was hurt, and Siakam's not a bad option. Yeah, but they not Kawhi on defense. Like, like, right. have you seen Kawhi in person? Like, I mean, no, like, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, no, so no, you're right. no, you're, you're right. Up close, like, yeah, like you're he, right. He his hands are humongous. Even for a guy like Giannis, like I said, I walked in and I've never seen a, a longer human being in terms of just like how tall they were. He was just like, just like literally like foam rolling and stretching. I'm like, yo, this dude is tall as hell. And then he stood up and he looked like the Hulk. But they might and, be- and and Kawhi was able to control him and keep him in you know you know in a certain pocket. Also, the thing that Giannis can do this year that he couldn't do last year was actually stretch out and hit a, a, a three if he's open. He's last year he couldn't do that. He's been making them uh, this year. Yeah. His percentages haven't been great, but he's been taking them. Last but, year he was not. But Toronto might go to that. Them. They might go to that box and one like they did you on Giannis. You can't do that on. You can't do that on Giannis. How? 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 How can you do that with George Hill on the floor? With Eric Bledsoe on the floor? Right. With, with Brooke Lopez on the floor? With Robin Lopez on the floor? Robin Lopez was looking like goddamn Wilt Chamberlain last year when he was on the Buck. I mean, I'm sorry, on the Bulls. But go ahead. No, I'm just saying that. Y- Giannis, if they can slow him down at all, yes. they could. They really could beat them. They're yeah. deeper and they have better secondary players. Like I'm sorry, I, I'll take Lowry and Ibaka and Gasol and Powell and Van Fleet, who looks like he can't really? miss a shot, I'm not over doing. Middleton uh, and and Bledsoe. Bledsoe's not, not Bledsoe's not good in the playoffs, and they lost Brogdon. People keep forgetting that. I'm, I'm taking the guy that has. I'm taking a team that has the best player and the and the and the overall best role players to me. Like I think Giannis is a better. I think I think one on one. I think look what happens in a series with Giannis versus Siakam is Giannis is now solely matched up on Siakam. He don't have to worry about stepping out and covering a whole Kawhi Leonard because you also got to think about it. Sometimes Giannis would get switched out on Kawhi, so Giannis would have to switch between three to five usually in terms of when he was in the game. Now that Kawhi is not out there, well, I don't need to switch on OG. And if I do get switched on OG, I'm getting rest. When, when, when that was Kawhi before and I got switched off Siakam, I wouldn't get no rest when I was guarding uh, 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 Gasol from last year, when I was guarding Ibaka from last year, when I was guarding uh, Kawhi from last year, when I wasn't on Siakam. This year, he's going to get a hell of rest on there. And they also have the size to match him. Last year, what they realized was that they got out-muscled by the Raptors. So what they did is they went out and they got Robin Lopez. Robin Lopez is not going to allow They're not really them. playing him, though, huh? are they? It doesn't matter. You you get him for situational He's good offensive rebound. You, you get him for situational right. games in the playoffs in which you need him to play physical and what you need because last year what you saw was Brooke could make threes, but he didn't want to get his ass down there and go rebound and fight no, with the They're kind of opposite Gasol. players. Yes, exactly. That's why you go and you get him. And it's good for team chemistry. Ilya Silva also returned. I like him. He's a guy that can hit an open three for them. I think they'll be okay. But but they may try the Raptors may throw Gasol on Giannis and say, "Stand at the free throw line and let him shoot." Is he gonna? He's better. I'll give you that. His, his three pointer is better, but is he gonna hit five threes a game for four games? You depended on Mark Gasol at this age to stop Giannis, though. Well, you're basically saying let him shoot, and if he comes inside the free throw line, then Gasol is a great defender, and that he knows what, how to use. That angles. was what you said last year, but this year he went out and he got better. Look at him. I'm serious. Like I have, like I don't know how many Bucks games you've watched, and I'm not trying to like make it seem like oh you didn't watch no Bucks <laughs> games. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying for you and for everybody that's listening to this, go now 
and start to watch Giannis's highlight reels. You will see a lot more jump shots. You will see a lot more mid-range jump shots. You will see a lot more three-pointers than you saw last year. Even if you just look at every shot, I, I wish somebody can, you know, can cut together a compilation of every single shot Giannis took last year in every game and every single shot Giannis took this year in every game. And we can look at the difference and you will see the difference in the shots that he's taking. And no, also the he, difference in the ways that he's been making plays. I don't think last year he was ready. I no, you don't tell me. I have him as the best player in the league. I know you got Luka. I got Giannis. Luka! Right? But my last thing I'll say is, is it crazy? I think Nick, I think Nick Nurse might have a coaching edge against the Bucs. I like Budenholzer's system, but Nurse makes adjustments. That's the thing. Yeah. Budenholzer's just like, let's hope what we've been doing all year works. Yeah. And Nurse isn't afraid to go to a box and one or try something wild or zone i'm like i don't know sitting here today what he'll do yeah. but i know that he won't be afraid to try something yeah. on Giannis unconventional yeah uh, i mean i i think i i do you know that was my biggest criticism last year i thought that in those moments um at the end of the games he was playing eric bledsoe in spots in, i'm sorry in spots in which he should not have been playing eric bledsoe in spots in which he should have been playing george hill or somebody differently um, so I do question Coach Bud's ability to make adjustments in the playoffs. Even when you're looking at series like you know, you know them versus you know the Hawks versus the you know the Cavaliers during the regular season, they could contend with the Cavaliers, but in the playoffs, he would always get like uh, annihilated by Tyron Lue in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm not upset at that, but I just personally have faith in Giannis, and I think that if he gets there this year, he won't make the same mistakes he made last year. And I think a lot of what I saw from him last year was him, and I and I even said I think we had a I think we had an episode called Giannis is a deer in headlights, and it's <laughs> because Giannis looked like a deer in headlights once he saw that wall that the Raptors had, and I think that this year now they have more size and more perimeter shooting to be able to contend with it. Even last year they didn't really have a ton of perimeter shooting. I, I you know I argue with Pavy because I was like yeah, but they lost Brock. He's like yeah, but they gained Wesley Matthews and they gained Kyle Korver. So you know yeah. those are two. Those are two perimeter shooters. They did that Miritich last year. Yes, exactly. Too. They exactly. didn't really work. Exactly. But so, he's a so now you have Corver and you have Wesley Matthews, guys that can shoot that Giannis can get the ball to. I think it'll be interesting to see the Raptors yeah, versus but, the Bucks series. So, but I'm but looking it at sounds the like you're on the same page that you think yeah, that. Would I think, be the I, 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 so you're ruling out Philly already. I, no, no, it's not that ruling them out. I didn't think that the Raptors can make the playoffs before this year, but I also didn't know how they would look without Kawhi. But then this year, seeing them in person and seeing them play frequently, it's because they run a great system and they got guys that fit well within their system so it's not that i'm dismissing philly but philly has not looked like philly to me was supposed to come out and they were supposed to be looking like ivan draco from like the rockies movies. <laughs> yeah but instead they've been looking more like um they've been looking more like rocky in in rocky five and i need them to look more like ivan draco the rappers have been looking more like Ivan Draco than than you know you, you know than you know than the 76ers right. have. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid look confused. Al Horford doesn't look like he's getting his shots in rhythm. He's shooting um you know the worst percentage he's shot from three in a while. Josh Richardson is still game to game spotty for me. So I'm looking at this East and, and even in terms of the Celtics, I don't think the Celtics have the size to contend with the Raptors. So I don't think that they are a real you know matchup. I think the Pacers maybe if Oladipo's mm. healthy, but I don't know about that. Other than that, I'm not. Not looking at or any another other. team that doesn't yes. shoot any threes. Unless Kevin Durant comes back, some um, you know, which I don't think he will. But if he comes back, I will pick the Nets to win these. If he, even if he came back for a month, I will pick the Nets to win these. I would. Yeah, I mean, because, he's a top because, two to three player in this world. Yeah, and so. don't I don't think he's gonna come back and be a top two player. I think he'll come back and be a top twenty five. player They'd be dumb to rush him back. Though. There's no point. I mean, you. I mean, you would, but also if he's healthy enough to play. I mean, there's nothing that. You, Is you that know, what mean? they're saying? Is a I mean, possibility? Saying, I thought I, he was I out. A, I see the man in practice shooting <laughs> and stuff like that. It's not like I'm not saying that he's ready for like full five on five action yet. But I mean, it, I mean, he. It's also not like he's a big muscular guy. So it's not, I, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we heal a little differently than guys who got a lot of muscle because it's more to heal. Like, right. with the skinny dudes, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, was, I wasn't as high on Philly for two reasons. I know we're not that yeah, no, no, we so can, much, yeah, but. No, we can talk about Philly quick, with your like, like, I didn't understand all the hype. I obviously thought they'd be good, but. You feel like me with the Jazz. No, but then, okay, you lost JJ Reddick. Yeah. So this was a team. What's their biggest flaw? Spacing, right? Yeah. That's been their biggest flaw. So you lost the one guy that was giving you yeah. incredible spacing and running around a million screens and confusing yeah. the D. Josh Richardson isn't that. I know he brings other things, but yeah. 
he's not somebody you have to sprint around screens at all costs and change your defense. Like Reddick, you have to. Yeah. And then they lose um, Butler, who to me was the one real closer they had. I don't think Ben Simmons is a good enough shooter. I don't think Embiid... I don't think posting up is an effective way to close games. So you lost your closer and your best shooter. So yeah, to me, I, I didn't understand them. how that team, how that yeah. team's better now. I just, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, I honest. even saw them in a win that they had. Um, who did they play? Uh, let me see. Who did they play? I saw them in a win that they had versus the 76ers. They were in a play where it was like Al Horford on the block and B was in a corner for a three. Ben Simmons at the top of the key. Tobias Harris on the other corner three. And uh, and James Ennis the third at the top on the side on the top on the top left hand side, and and literally been, been, the play was for Embiid to get a, a three. It's like what right. the, what is this? So what was that hype? Was that just like media stuff? No, like you no, lost your shooter and no, closer. No, no, no. They got they picked this team to they they built this team to play against the Raptors and the Bucks. They didn't build it for the regular season. So in the playoffs versus the Raptors and the Bucks, when the game slows down. You I still got to score. With, I'm not worried about them scoring, though. I mean, I mean, I'm not worried about their points. How many points per game are they putting up? Do you know? Do you have it in front of you by any chance? What's their offensive rating? Um, let me see. I'm gonna go. They weren't in the top ten. No, that's fine. I'm gonna go. Let me see. Traditional stats, advanced leaders. The they're sixteenth in offensive rating according to Basketball Reference. Yeah, yeah, they are sixteenth. Um, eh. That's not good. I mean, you know, yes, it's not horrible. Yes, but they're six in terms of defensive rating, though. They're right. a, they're second in terms of assist percentage. They're they're, they're fourth in terms yeah. of assist ratio. They're eleventh in net rating. I mean, they're a good team, rate. but that's not great. That doesn't speak finals. Yeah. That speak. Yeah. And and I, I mean, maybe this really, will be really my hot take, year. but I've been saying this. I don't think Brett Brown in crunch time yeah. has proven to be a great coach. I think they look yeah. lost in crunch time. Maybe some of that isn't his fault, and it's Ben Simmons' inability to shoot yeah. causing problems. But I don't know. I don't trust them in a close game. Um, and I think they lost the two players that I would trust to make a shot in a close game. I, I, I'll put it that way. I, I, Jimmy didn't work with these guys. Um, I don't think Ben is a fit on this team. I've been looking at it. I don't think – I think Horford I, – I don't know, man. It's just – I, you know, I, I was a guy that was very high on Ben Simmons. I'm still very high on Ben Simmons. Um, I just think that he is not gonna work well being on this team. I think that they have that they have, um, you know, you know, um, you know, a problem that a lot of teams wind up doing when they try to just like accumulate talent because they because they're looking for more so like matchups, but they don't think about how it'll work in terms of a team perspective. I think they have three guys that all play the same position and occupy the same space on the floor with Horford and Bede and Simmons and I don't know what to do with this team other than yeah. trade Ben but I don't even know who you trade Ben for or where you trade Ben to so I think you just gotta do what I said and pray that this is the team that you built to play in the playoffs versus right. the Bucks and the Raptors. It's funny Ingram is making a case now <laughs> yeah. that he maybe should have went number one and we kind of we all probably laughed at that, right? Even a year yeah. ago, we were like, Ingram is well, not that great, yeah, and I Simmons is amazing. Think, and I still don't think Ingram's that great. I still think Ben Simmons is a better player. Ben Simmons is still a, Ben Simmons to me is still a top five perimeter defender. Yeah, because his defense. But Ingram's having a great year. I think and he's, he's making I, that a conversation. I think Bi's having a great year. I do. I think Bi's having a very good year. But I also think that Bi's is, is 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 benefiting from the fact that the guy who was the face of the franchise tore his goddamn meniscus. Shout out to my son Zion. But yeah, whatever. I'm not, I don't like Philly, but I feel you. Let's go ahead. Let's talk Celtics. What are your thoughts about the Celtics? Um, do you, are they contenders? Are they pretenders? Do you think they can win the East? Um, you know, do you like Gordon Hayward this year? Is this Gordon Hayward's best year um, so far? Obviously, he's out. You know, we know with the injured hand. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? They're good. Um, they're ninth in offensive rating, eighth in defense. So they're one of those five teams we mentioned that are top ten in both. Yeah. I think that's. That's kind of on the border of being a contender, right? Yeah. Ninth and eighth. It's like, okay, you're technically top ten in yeah. both, but you're not elite top five in either. I think it's still the same problems. Like, who's their best player? Uh, I think that, you know, last year with Kyrie, they Tatum, you kind of clarified that. But, like, it's like I like their system, but it's, it's almost like hot potato sometimes. Like, yeah. swing it to Brown, swing it to Tatum, swing it to Hayward, swing it to Kemba Walker. But it's like... 
sometimes you're just like, it's almost too much ball moving sometimes. And then you're just driving into yeah. nowhere. I, I think they still kind of have that problem where they don't know who their best player is. I think Walk Kemba's a better fit than Kyrie. And obviously the chemistry's better. Marcus Smart's a key. I will say that. He when is. he hits threes, they look like a team that could like yeah. break what I'm saying and make that Eastern Finals probably take the Raptors spot. Like if, if, if Marcus Smart shoots close to 40% from three, I might have to change and say it'll be Bucks Celtics. If, if Marcus Smart shoots uh, close to 40% to three, I'm going, my hair is gold right now. <laughs> I'm going to grow that, that fro hawk he had. And I'm a shit, and I'm a dot the top of it, blonde gold. And I'm a wear a fro hog Marcus Smart hat if he shoots forty percent from three in the playoffs. That's yeah. how much faith I have in him shooting. 40% I mean, from right now he's shooting thirty three point six percent from threes. Just pulled that up. Yeah. Um, you know that's not horrible. League average is like thirty five, but you know if he's gonna play big minutes and start, you kind of gotta get a little bit closer. I think that's still kind of their Achilles heel. But Brad Stevens is doing a nice job. But what do you think? Do you think Tice and Canner is enough? You know, in the post, obviously they they lost their bigs. They lost Horford. Like some people are saying, that's kind of their fatal flaw. Like come playoffs, do you think that's enough talent at the center position? I think that what they will try to do is try to acquire Stephen Adams before the end of the trade deadline. Um, I think. There's also more over there if you want to um, go and grab some. Feel free. Um, I think they will try to try to acquire Stephen Adams before the, the trade deadline. I also think that they will try desperately um, if they can um, to see if they can maybe pry a guy like New Orleans Noel away from Oklahoma City. Um, he's a guy that has a very good contract. Um, you know, it's favorable for OKC. I think he only has two million dollars on the books, I believe, this year, something like that, or nine million dollars. Um, that's a very movable contract. He's played well. He provides some size. He 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 can shoot. He can shoot decently. I've seen him in person this year. He's you know played pretty well for that team. Um, looks good. Looks healthy. Um, I think that there are options out there. I even think a guy like Aaron Gordon is an option. And, and, and although he's not. And actually, you know what? I'll take that back. Aaron Gore is not an option. That's not. But actually, I wouldn't be surprised. He's been disappointing, right? Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised even if they tried to trade for a guy like a Mo Bamba, like a young guy. Like, he's been playing recently since Vucevic has been hurt. Um, But I do think that there is size out there for them to um, to go and get if they want. It is size, you know, to me personally for them to go out and find if they want to find it. It's just a matter of, of how desperately they actually want to go out and get it and what they and what they want to pay for. Because obviously Danny Ainge has a treasure trove of picks. You know, he's had it pretty much for the past, what, five, six years, a bunch of picks. Right. Um, so those, those picks will be valuable to other franchises. Right. So he can maybe, you know, swindle away a Steven Adams from – Oklahoma City because Oklahoma City is also in a luxury tax as well. So they're trying to shed money off their books. So that's a favorable contract for them. And Steven Adams wouldn't be bad in Boston. Go ahead. No, Adams would be a good fit. What He seemed I, – I went to the – you guys were covering the game. I was at the Clippers-Thunder game last Monday. A couple of times I watched Adams this year. I, I feel like he doesn't look – Quite himself. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, but I mean, you think he's just kind of like okay, we're Russ is we're gone. not very good. No, Russ like, is gone. Like who? Like who? That's like his boy, I guess. Like, no, not that. That's his boy. Who gets you all your open shots? Who gets your easy looks at the basket? Who takes pressure off of you from rebounding because he wants to go down there and rebound? So when you don't feel like going to grab that board, he can just go and grab that board for you. Like, that's what they're missing from this team this year. Montez Harrell was, like, embarrassing him. Like, yeah, like literally. I mean, like, it yeah, wasn't but, a contest. But, but, but the difference is, back last year, Russ would have been down there rebounding with Steven Adams. So, Montrez wouldn't have been able to do – I mean, obviously, offensively, Montrez has been embarrassing a lot of people this year. Right. Montrez Harrell, to me, uh, is arguably a top three center in the NBA this year. I would say probably wow. Carl Anthony Towns, Joel Embiid, um, and then I would probably say Montrez Harrell. I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah. I, th- I think I think the Clippers realistically have four All Stars this year. I think the way that the Warriors have four All Stars, the Clippers have four All Stars. I think the Lakers have two All Stars. I think the Clippers have four All Stars. I think the Nuggets have. I don't. I don't think the Nuggets quite honestly have any All Star. I don't think Jokic is Jokic. An he's Come not, on, man. He's not been an All Star this year. They're look in second numbers. place in the West. But look at his numbers, though. He's he had a, he had a night the other night. We had like nine five and something like that. Like no, he's not playing at an All Star level this but year. But the whole to offense me. is runs through him. I mean, it's yeah, not but, just the but, numbers. Yeah, yeah, but that don't make you an All Star though. That don't make not when it's better competition. Even a guy like Brandon Ingram, like but I've you been arguing, put that he's not. Montrose hair on the Nuggets. They may not be a playoff team. 
If you traded Jokic, and I disagree with that. I disagree with that. You putting too much. You putting too much faith on Jokic in that system. That's a system. That is a system that that, that relies is a, on his passing. No, that, that's not true. That is a system that they have been running for the past four years. That even when Yusef Nurkic was there, taking away shot attempts from Jokic, which is why they trade they traded Nurk because Nurk was taking away shot attempts from um, uh, from Jokic. You know that, right? Yeah. Like they didn't just trade away Nurk for no reason. Nurk didn't just magically get traded away <laughs> because like because Jokic needed to pass more. They could have both played if Jokic wanted to pass more. They traded him away because Nurk wanted more shots. And when you want more shots, that's what you sacrifice. You give that up. If you look at Montrezl Harold on that team, he could go out on that team and give you 20 and 9. That still makes you a playoff team. They were damn near a playoff team when Nurkic was there. They missed it by a couple games both years. I love Harold, but that's a different level in my opinion. He's been better than Jokic this year. Montrez has been better this year than Jokic. No. Montrez Harold. Actually, that's going to be the name of this episode. No. Montrez Harold has been the year. No. Yes, he has. Look at the numbers. No. I pull up the numbers. Pull Denver's up the numbers. Denver's first in defense. Pull up, no. I'm asking Denver's you. Denver's first in pull defensive rating. Pull up the numbers. Rating. Pull up Denver's the numbers. First in defensive pull up rating. the numbers. Eli, pull up the numbers. <laughs> pull up the numbers. Pull up the numbers. That's what I want you to That's what I want to see. I'm finna pull them up. I'm probably going to get to them faster than you're going to get them. I'm going to pull up the numbers. Compa- player All comparison. Right, Player to player mm-hmm. on basketball reference, both of them oh, right, right here, right now. Let's get it. That player to players. Montrez has been better than Jokic this year, bro. Stop it. Y'all You're going not to... factoring defense. I, what you fact... mean? He's been playing defense. Gee. He's a liability on defense. What? No, you're not. Montrez Harold, he's like 6'8. All right, come on, man. No, he's not. He's not no goddamn liability. It's so disrespectful, man. <laughs> I love the Lou Williams Harold pick and roll, but uh, you, come on, come you on, can't come compare on, come Jokic. On, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Here we go. Points per game. Montrez Harold, 18.6 points per game. Nikola Jokic, 15.6 points per game. <laughs> personal fouls. Montrez Harold, 2.3 personal fouls. Nikola Jokic, 3.3. Blocks per game, Montrez Harrell, 1.3. Nikola Jokic, 0.5. Sad. Steals per game, Montrez Harrell, 0.9. Nikola Jokic, 1.1. A little bit better. Total rebounds per game. This is what Jokic has. Him. He has 10.4 total rebounds per game. Montrez give you 7.6 total rebounds a game. Offensive rebounds, Montrez getting more offensive rebounds. Free throw percentage, Jokic is shooting uh, 10% better from the free throw line than Montrez um, um, at 76% versus 66.3%. But in terms of their effective field goal percentage, Montrez is shooting higher. In terms of their two-point attempts, Montrez is shooting higher. Montrez has not taken, but he's only taken, he's taken six three-point attempts this year. He has not hit one. He's shooting higher from the field than Jokic. He's taken uh, 0.7 less shots per game than Nikola Jokic, and he's making 1.4 more baskets than Nikola Jokic. Stop the lies. Need- and he's shooting 2.1 more free throws than Nikola Jokic. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me, Eli. You're lying. This is ridiculous. You're lying. You're telling me a bench player is better than yes! the, best, the best player on the best defensive team in the league and the number two seed in the West. Look at the per 36 numbers, too. Look at them, look, look at them side <laughs> by side. Look at the per 36 numbers. He's better. He's better. He's better than that man. He is. He's good. He's better. He's but, better but that, than that man. But, also, Off the bench. They're asked to do different things, though. One guy is running your entire offense as a starter. That's disrespectful. He's not point. running the whole offense. I a guess. lot of Harold's buckets come from the attention Lou Williams Jokic gets. Jokic is not running that entire offense, though. I hate that. I hate that assessment. He's not the point guard of their team. They run their offense he's through. Not he the basically point guard. is the point guard. No, he's not. They give it to him at the elbow, and they run all their action off that. He's not basically the point guard. He is leading. Who's team their point the guard? Then? He is lead- Jamal Murray is their point guard. He's a shooter, man. He's not just a shooter, bro. He's their point guard too. Even if you look at their usage percentages, let's it's see. It's funny because I'm the biggest Harold fan out there, but I'm not. Murray even say- has a higher usage percentage than than Jokic. And he's a point guard. That's what I'm saying. No, Jokic, Jokic is like Draymond. Draymond not the point guard. Draymond is a power forward. Jokic is a center. Montrez Harrell is a center. He not the point guard. Center to center, Montrez Harrell is better than Nikola Jokic this year. We'll period. See, we'll see what Look the, up the facts. We'll see what the, Look up the facts. 
Just look up the facts. Let's see what the fans look up the say. facts. Just look up the facts. Let's see what the fans look up the say. facts. That's all I'm saying. Run a poll right now on Twitter. I guarantee you, Jokic will get more votes. All right, that's fine. Let's go. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna put it up. I'm, I'm yeah. actually. Yeah, I need a little more. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What you're saying to me right now. It's fine. I don't even know how we got on this discussion. I think we were talking about Stephen Adams and we were talking about the Celtics. But regardless of what all of that is, the Celtics to Jokic me. Jokic might be the best center in the league. No, he's not. How are you the best in the league averaging 15 points a game? What? Cat better than him. MB better than him. Montrez better than him. Come on, man. Come on. What? To get a little more here. Montrez better than Jokic. He's been way better than Jokic this season. Jokic is not having the greatest year of numbers. I'll admit that. But Denver's entire scheme... Is built around him. That's Harold comes in, runs pick and roll with Lou, and he gets a lot of dunks and lobs, and, and he's a great player. But he's being asked to do something different. So what? What's he's wrong not the with focal that? What's point. Wrong with that? What's wrong? What's, how is he not the There's focal There's nothing point? wrong with how that. How is he not the focal but point? He's being asked Doc to do Rivers literally told else. me in a press conference. He said, My main objective is to keep Lou Will and to keep Montrez on the floor with Kawhi and PG at all times. So how is he not? How is he not a key part of that? Okay, all? with it. Because he don't start. I, out of those he four, started, he's the fourth okay, option. Wait he's the fourth wait, option. Wait, 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 wait. He started in the game. He started the game in which Zubak sat on the bench. He's their fourth option. What? Montrezl Hill. And he's better than Nikola Jokic. I'm just saying. He's better. Any team's fourth option is facing a different type of defensive game planning than the team's first option. Mm, nah, nah, come on, man. You you telling me you don't have the game plan for Montrezl Harrell? You do, but he, he, because you have to game plan more for Lou Williams, Harold Dust gets a lot of open looks. You got a game plan for all of them. That's why they doing what they doing. You tweaking. <laughs> I'm with you. you go uh, into a game. I'm picking the Clippers to win the championship. But, but that's not I'm the not going to say Jokic is worse I than Montrez Harold. I am. He is. Jokic is worse than Montrez Harold. I will say it. If don't nobody want to say it, saying? I'm saying it. They ain't ain't, ain't what nobody what? said it yet. Ain't nobody said it yet. Hey, Hold if on, you're following live, you should be yeah, commenting yeah, on it. Yeah, actually, 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 let's see what they say. They said, um, Luca smack LeBron. <laughs> let's see, your mics ain't working. Oh, this old audio is low. Damn, my bad if the, if the audio is still low and y'all still uh, watching this. My bad, fam. Um, but it's playing through the computer. It's nothing I can do about that one. Uh, my dog, apologies. But um, anyways, moving on. Oh, let's move on because we're not going to agree on that one. Yeah, we not. We definitely not going to agree on that. <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Let's I, talk about I hope tonight you, you say to Doc or on my podcast earlier today I, I called Harold a better player than Jokic. I'm curious what he, Doc has to say. I'm not going to say that to him, man. <laughs> I know you always try to send me <laughs> off, G. Stop that. Stop Ask that. Harold directly if he thinks he's better than I'm Jokic. Not gonna, no, hell no. He's going to be mad. He's going to treat me. Montrez. <laughs> my, this is also the thing about. He is like, well dressed, though. No, but this is also the thing that and I said. And shout out to him. He comes to Sparks of, games. I love Montrez. Harold. This is also the thing that I said about in terms of like knowing, I mean, you know, learning guys and learning their character. Montrez is a guy of very high character. So even if I asked him that, he would feel disrespected that I asked him that because he just, he always says, I don't go and take, I'm, it's not a personal thing. I'm just out there doing my matchup and playing the best basketball that I can play in this moment. And it's not about me like, like seeing guys and being like, oh, this is a personal right. thing. So last thing, last thing I'll say on that. About that. Last thing we I'll can s- speculate on that, but go ahead. Last thing I'll say on that is a lot of his production is against backup centers. That's the last thing I'll say. It's not his fault. That's not his fault. That's what he's asked to go out and do. But I do think comparing his numbers out to Diogic is a little deceiving. If he plays 31 minutes tonight, how is all his minutes against backup centers? Backup I'd, say centers 20 of those, minutes I'd say 20 of those minutes are against other team second units. So he finishes the game, though. Yes, he's a great well, player. He finishes the game. What do you mean? He's a great player. He finishes the game and usually actually will play 18 of the 24 minutes in the second half. I'm That's just against the bench players? I'm just saying. What you mean? I'm asking I'd be you. Curi- Literally, to start, to start the their rotation <laughs> usually goes. Zoo comes in. If Zoo don't pick up two or three fouls within the first three minutes of the, of the third quarter, he'll stay on the floor to the six minute mark. Montrez will stay on the floor to the six minute mark until like maybe like the end of the quarter. Then he might sit for like two minutes in the fourth and then play the rest of the game. I'm just saying that's against the bench. I'd be curious to know out of the, what did you say, he's averaging 24, 21, whatever he's averaging? No, no, he's averaging 18.5. 18, Nikola okay. Jokic is averaging 15. I'd be curious to know out of those 18, what percentage that comes when he's playing against the second units. I don't think it Cause matters. Because in the playoffs, that's going to be different. Uh, I disagree with that. I think. I will give I him think. credit, though. He, he's playing really well. 
His numbers are good. You, you're right. His numbers are really good, but... What? His numbers are good, but what? His numbers are... Let's move on. No, 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 I'm saying, but what? No, I think good, but I'm what? not... A fourth option coming off the bench, it's hard to compare that to a team's... A, a player who's the focal point. I don't think, but that's what I'm Whether saying. Whether you like Jokic or not, that's what, that's what I'm is he or is he not though. the best player in the Nuggets? Jokic is, argu- is he or is he not the best player in the Nuggets? I, he's arguably, debatably. Have you seen him this year? But you're just focused on the numbers. I'm saying. I'm not. I've seen the man play basketball this year. He ain't that good. <laughs> so how are the Nuggets 13 and 4? Because the team is good. I'm just saying they got a great system. I literally just said they got a great system. You gotta put a little I saw more them when they had you, Seth Nurkic. They have a great system, bro. What you, you mean? You gotta put a little more respect on Jokic. Uh, no, no. Tell him to put some more respect on his name and average more than 15.6 points per game. It's disrespectful. He's averaging a double double. So what? So what? Do better. You're not an all star this year. Montre is more of an all star than Jokic. But, anyway, let's go ahead. Speaking of the Clippers, are there road losses this year to you worrisome? You've been a person. That I've heard, um, <laughs> you know, you have polarizing thoughts on load management. What are your thoughts on load management? And what are your thoughts on sacrificing games potentially for for the sake of load management? I'm not against load management. I think it's smart. I mean, the Raptors last year load managed Kawhi. They sacrificed the one seed, right? People forget yeah. that. They finished second last year, the Raptors. Yeah. Kawhi sat out 20-plus games, and they finished two games back of the Bucks. Yeah. If... If he had played even 10 of those games, they finish him first. But it obviously paid off. They won the title. Yeah. But I think my issue is in the Western Conference is a different story. In the East, you could load manage Kawhi and you finish second, right? But what are, what are, what are the Clippers right now? Let's pull up the standings. Right now, today, the Clippers in the Western Conference. Just give me one second here. Western Conference. The Clippers are third. Are third. Are third. Okay. And if they lose to the Wizards so, tonight, which I'm covering the game, and they'll be you see this, they'll be four. So that, so that's my issue. They got to the goddamn Wizards. So that's my issue. In the West, load management might cause the Clippers to finish third or fourth instead of first or second. Now you got to play the Western semis on the road and the Western finals on the road. Unless you play the Lakers. And then and that, and every then game is basically a road it game. It don't matter. It's going to be a road game anyways. You at home. But... You see my point, though. Load manager in the West has more ramifications than in the, the East I mean, this because is, the schedule is harder. You. you think home court advantage really matters if you the Clippers and, the, and you play the Lakers at home? I think it matters if you now have to play the Nuggets also on the road. It adds up. And what if they finish fourth and now you got to play the Clippers in the Western semifinals? You don't even get to the conference finals. So what? The, I, think, I think the Clippers are built to beat any of these teams, though. I agree. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm pro load management, but I'm arguing that it could affect their seating. That's what I'm saying. You're giving yourself a harder road, but if that's what it needs for Kawhi to be healthy, then yeah, they should do it. I mean, do you think that it's an issue with the league? I mean, we saw a guy like Mo Bamba the other night. um, You know, a couple weeks ago. I'm sorry. Have uh, you know he was out for load management? Um, What are your? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I think teams need to do what's best for them. I think. It's an 82-game season, and your job... If if the media is going to say it's about winning titles, yeah, then you have to do whatever it takes, takes to win a title. Yeah. We can't say it's about titles and then get mad at the Raptors or the Clippers yeah. for protecting their yeah. best player. So if, if the league wants to get rid of load management, then they have to shorten the season. It's like, we know the solutions here, but you're not going to give up revenue to shorten the season. So it's like, yeah. you can't have it both ways. Yeah, I but agree. I don't fault the Clippers. I mean... The one I'm curious your thoughts. The one argument you do hear is like, okay, a dad's taking his, you know, a dad or a mom is taking little kid to the game. They're not gonna get to see their favorite player. I mean, I feel for that. Yeah. Is that but is that the team's responsibility? Is that the league? That's probably the one. It's thing. nobody's responsibility. You go there to see the Los Angeles Clippers or the Toronto Raptors or the Milwaukee Bucks or the Chicago Bulls. You don't go there to see the Derrick Roses, the Joaquin Noah. You go there to see the team. And it's a team sport for a reason. And guys, and it's a t- it's literally a team sport. It's a team sport for a reason. Because motherfuckers get injured. That's why you got backups. You know what I mean? Right. Like if people didn't get injured, you know they there are no there there aren't really that many alternates on esports teams. It's just kind of the five guys that can play, and you probably got one alternate in case somebody thumb hurt one day. You know what I mean? Guys don't get injured like that. 
But in a league in which guys are constantly getting injured, twisting their ankle, falling out of bounds, hurting their back, hurting their neck, all the kind of stuff like that, you need backups. You have backups for a reason because guys get injured. So as a fan, your expectations should always be to go to the game to see the team and not to see a player. If you want and you are excited about seeing a player, it should it's a bonus if they are healthy enough to play. But if they are not healthy enough to play, then you shouldn't be upset that they are not healthy enough to go out and perform at a peak level. Because why would you want to see a subpar performance from your favorite player anyways, just so that way you can say you saw them if they aren't going to be physically able to do it? Like, I don't, I, you know, it's something like that that kind of don't compute. It's like, you don't, if somebody got the flu, you don't tell them to go to work. And you know what I mean? You know, like you tell them, like, like hey, stay home, get rest. You know what I mean? If I tell my, if Timmy tear my ACL, it's like me having the flu for fucking six weeks, eight weeks. Right. Knee tendonitis. I mean, it's like the flu, but it lasts forever. But I just gotta manage it, you know. So you have to manage the load, and that's what it, and that's what it's about. Yeah. Me. I don't, I don't disagree with Doc. I don't disagree with any of these coaches or anybody that's doing what they do with all this kind of stuff. I just think it's just one of those scenarios where people have to kind of get over it themselves because I think people do take a lot of this a little bit too seriously. I really do. I don't disagree with anything you just said. Yeah, but anyways, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Who are your top um, five players in the... I'm sorry, your top ten players in the NBA so far this year? In order or just my ten? You can, I mean, it's up to you. How do you want to do it? Okay, so I for my top five, I have tiers. Okay. Um, I think I've told you, but not the public. So tier one is Kawhi and LeBron. All right, hold on. Wait a minute. You doing your top ten or you doing your top five? Top 10, but okay. I'm starting. Uh, okay, all right, okay, cool. Okay, go but ahead. I got tiers. Okay. Tier one is Kawhi and LeBron. Okay. Now, obviously, Giannis, Luka, and Harden have had better numbers and seasons, mm -hmm. but to me, at the end of the day, if it's game seven of the finals, those to me, and we're just talking healthy. Obviously, I'm not factoring in Durant uh -huh. or Curry right now or Clay Thompson, but if it's game seven of the finals, to me, LeBron and Kawhi are still the biggest forces of nature as far as offense, defense, get you a bucket, make the right play. Tier two, I got Giannis because he hasn't proven it yet in the playoffs. So that's why I put him a little bit behind Kawhi and LeBron. But similar to them, he can do it all, right, physically. Tier three, so now we got my fourth and fifth best players, Luka and Harden, right? Those guys are studs. They're putting up huge numbers, but I don't think they're defensively especially the type of athletes though so those that's my top five i top, number six i got davis um he's okay. kind of in the tier of his own to me is like right after that group mm -hmm. and then for my my last four it's real close um i got cat carl anthony towns having a great year the timberwolves are 10 and 9 yeah. i gotta show respect i got lillard i know that the blazers are not their record's not good but with him on the court I actually read that they were like plus 2.8 net rating. Okay. So they're still playing well yeah. with him. They just, when he goes to the bench, they're screwed. Yeah. Um, Embiid, yeah. obviously the health is always a thing. But when he's out there, it's hard to deny what he's doing. So that's that right there is nine. And then I, I'm, I might, I'm torn with... My tenth, I'd put like a tie right now between Jokic and Siakam. Uh, stop. I know. Dead. I know. I'm almost just said Siakam because I didn't want to talk about Jokic anymore. But you know what? Maybe I'll put Siakam in. I mean, the Raptors are that good, and you gotta credit somebody. So I think that tenth spot's up for grabs. But I think Siakam is kind of cracking towards there. And um, I know you don't like Jokic, but to me, Denver and Toronto deserve some credit on the list. So for me, I, so for me, I don't have mine broken up into tiers. Um, but um, in terms of what I do have, my top ten in uh, not in order. Um, I have Giannis, I have LeBron in my top ten. I have Pascal Siakam in my top ten. I have Kawhi Leonard in my top ten. I have Carl Anthony Towns in my top ten. James Harden, uh, Anthony Davis is there, obviously. Dame Lillard. I have Paul George. And then, obviously, I have the best player. I said the best player in the NBA. Luka! Doncic, let's get it. The White Knight, he's here. We here. We doing it. We are here. 
Oh, snap. And also, you know, you know, for my honorable mention, I got guys like Donovan Mitchell out there. I got Joel Embiid. I don't think Joel Embiid has been a top 10 player in the NBA this year. Um, Malcolm Brogdon is honorable mention this year. I thought I think he's been very, very good this year. Um, Rudy Gobert has been great this year. Uh, Kimba Walker has been really, really good. Uh, Bradley Beal has been really, really good, even though the Wizards... Beal, I thought about Beal. Yeah, I thought about Beal, but the Wizards just don't win enough. Actually, I can see Bradley Beal tonight. Actually, I just yeah. thought about that. I can see Bradley Beal. A little Beal. interview. Yeah, so that'll okay, be... Okay, so it looks like our lists are the same except for... You had Paul George, yeah. Knight, and B. Yeah, I have Paul George. I'm, so we're we're Paul pretty George close there, than, though. Paul George is better than B right now. Paul George had a terrible, uh, terrible game the other night um, in San Antonio, but but it's kind of one of those things where you know I've talked to him uh, numerous times after the games, and he said that he's just trying to find his rhythm and trying to figure it out but, and trying to figure out how not to uh, negatively affect other guys' games. And I think sometimes he just gets lost. And I think that and there will come a moment in the time in the season where he will just be like, give me the ball and get the hell out of my way. And I think th- that'll happen. That's why right. I have him like just outside the top 10. Yeah. I would agree with you that he's like talent wise top yeah. 10, but I don't know. It's tough. Those guys in like the seven to 10 range are kind of like, they have the tools, but we need to see him do it in the playoffs. Yeah. And I don't know, mate, you could argue George has done it in the playoffs to some extent, right? I mean, like he's been to the Eastern a very, finals. A very but small That's extent, my point. But, so that's, I'm kind of like, you're right. He kind of gets lost yeah. sometimes. Like when I went to I went to the Clippers Thunder game with two Mondays ago, and they won. And give yeah. him credit, he hit the game winning three. Yeah. But at the same token, their offense looked a mess in that game yeah. without Kawhi. And yeah. I was kind of looking to him yeah. to step to, to up a little bit more and like yeah. run the offense. Now you did hit the game winning shot, so I can't. Yeah. I have to give you that credit. But with the same token, the offense looked very disorganized, and I was kind of like, "Where is he?" Yeah. Like you didn't know. Like, for example, Lou Williams, you notice, and Harold. Yeah. But Paul George, you were almost like, if you didn't know anything about basketball, if you just took a random guy who was never, like, doesn't follow the NBA, yeah. and you're like, who are the best players in the Clippers watching that game, they would have probably put Harold Williams ahead yeah. of Paul George. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, even this season coming back, he's shooting 42.6% from the field, 39.1% from the three-point line, which is great, 93.5% from the free throw line. He's giving you six boards, 3.9 assists, but he's giving you 3.9 turnovers. So he's really negating the assists that he's giving you. His plus minus differential this year is a 6.6, um, you, know, you, know, you know, which is good in his favor. Um, you know, but I do think that in terms of, you know, for him, he's played nine games this year. He just really just has to find a rhythm. I just think that he's just at the point where he just has to find a rhythm. And, you know, he's a guy, you know, he, you know, he said that, you know, um, you know, in the post game, he's like, I got two new shoulders. That's why he's been shooting better than he, he, mm. he you know, he felt when he first came back. Um, and that's because he said he got two new shoulders. So I've just got to give him some time to find his rhythm coming up, you know, you know, coming back. I also think that, you know, and also what a lot of you all don't know is because you, you know, you don't really follow the team like I do in terms of like as a, as a reporter is, day, that, right. is that like they don't practice a lot. And they don't and they don't practice a lot and they don't do a lot of shoot arounds. So it's not like, you know, for them where, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, where they get to spend a lot of time on the practice floor together with each other. Right. So every practice that they get is very, very valuable. Um, but they don't get a lot of time to practice with each other because of the fact that, you know, the NBA's practicing rules and things of that sort just pro you know, prohibit them from being able to go at it the way that they want to go at it. But they don't practice as much as you would think they do. So the only time that they actually do get a chance to play with each other is when they're on the floor. And, and Pat Bev has said that a few times after the game. Where, where, let me ask this. Where would you put Jimmy Butler in this conversation? Jimmy Butler, um, he's in my, like, 15 Is he to in an honorable 20, mention? He's my 15 to 25 range. He's not in my honorable mention. Because the Heat are playing pretty are, well, right? Yeah, they're playing very well, but it's not because of Jimmy Butler. And that's why Jimmy Butler is not in my top whatever. And it, because they aren't playing well because he's out on the floor. Like, uh, they are, okay. they're playing well, but it's not because of Jimmy Butler. They're just playing well. So it sounds like our lists are the same. We just I feel like Jokic is a big point of disagreement. Jokic is not better than – Jokic is not a top 20 player in so the NBA. So if you, took, if you took him off the Nuggets, in all seriousness, how do you think the Nuggets record would be? They're four, if I took him off the Nuggets, right period? They're 13 and four. If, if he, I took him off the Nuggets, period? Yeah, they're 13 and four. Without him, period, and you don't replace him with anybody, obviously they're not a playoff team. He, I mean, he makes them a playoff team, but I still think with Montrez on that team, they could be a playoff team. Now, would they be a top-two seed? 
I don't know because, as you said, the offense is more so built for him to be able to get the ball in his hands. I still don't think he is the primary ball handler on that team. I think Jamal Murray is, which is also the biggest reason that I you know, don't think that the Nuggets will ever be contenders because you depend on Jokic and Murray, two guys that have to share the ball, that don't really do well controlling the ball, being able to create their own right. shots. Right. Well, Jokic, it's more like he's controlling it by the pass, but... I hear you. This year, he's probably not top 10, but I feel like overall, I still consider him like the 10th best player in the NBA. It's just stats haven't been top 10 this year. Siakam's interesting case, too. Siakam's way. Siakam's like a million times better than him. We'll see. Let, let's see if Siakam can do this for the whole year. But I, look, I had him in my top 10, so. I'm not upset at it. So let's go ahead. Yeah, I thought we'd let's disagree talk more. About so the MVP. Um, oh, wow. Who do you have so far for MVP this season? Who's your MVP of the NBA? So what, at Hoops and Brews, do you guys have, like, your MVP definition or you and Pavi? You know, because people look at it very differently. Some people look at it as the best player on the best team. Some people look at it on stats. Some people say you have to be a top two seed. I, you guys I, pretty open-ended I look on at it? it from all, I look at it who's the most valuable player to their team in terms of who's who's the... Who's the best? Okay. I look at it. Who, I look at it as, as who is the best and most valuable player to their team. So I'll start with my top three. Okay. I've narrowed it down. It's close. Okay. I feel like Giannis, Luca, and Harden okay. so far. Okay. Are like the three you have to like really look at. Okay. And I think LeBron would be like a fourth. Okay. But like probably fourth because okay. him and AD are kind of like splitting that. Okay. I think Gian, you could make a good argument for Giannis, Luca, and Harden. Um, Luca, I think, offensively, has been the best. Yes. I think Giannis in that group. The reason I'd probably go Giannis is just because he does it on both ends. I still think with Luca and Harden, they're hurting you on the other end. And some of those losses, you just you have to say, like, they have to score, like, 35-plus points for them to, like, be the forces they are. Because they are giving something up on the other end. Giannis yeah. can have a game where he scores 20, yeah. gives you 11 rebounds. Yeah. Has a monster yeah. defensive game. Or so game I, give you 15 and 20. Right now, I'd probably go one Giannis, and then Luke and Harden are right on their his tail and, like, have a legitimate case. Okay. And LeBron in fourth. Okay. Right. Number one, Luka Doncic is the MVP to me currently right now. Um, and, and, and I say one, and actually I say one A, because I think that one B is Giannis. Um, I kind of look at them as being tied right now. I think what a lot of people fail to realize about – Luca to begin this season is number one. He's twenty. Number two, that Kristaps Porzingis is coming off an ACL surgery, um, you know, and, and didn't play basketball for an entire year last year. Is coming back, getting into the groove of things, trying to get back into the groove of things as it pertains to his shot, as it pertains to coming off pick and rolls, as it pertains to being the guy to set the pick and roll. Um, I see a lot of scenarios in which he's getting the ball in situations where he should take shots and he's passing them up in situations where he should pass up shots and he's taking them. I think that that will come with his rhythm. And I think the fact that Luka Doncic is going out there and giving you 39-9, and nine, um, doing what he's doing at his age with this team that a lot of people said would not make the playoffs, um, I think that it's amazing. I mean, I mean, they're currently the fourth seed. They could, you know, potentially this year, like if I would have told you, that, you, know, you know, before this year that Luka Doncic would average 39.5 and 9.5 and the Mavericks would make the playoffs and with a top five seed, you're not, tell, you're not telling me anybody else is the MVP. So let me ask you this, though. I, love, I, I, just said, I like Harden's numbers. Harden is going to average 40 like Pat said. Thing. But, that doesn't, but it's just Luka, like. I, I have Luka in my top three, so I'm not de- arguing yeah, with you. Ahead. But that's kind of why I go with the honors over Luka or Harden because – that's my thing. How do you give it to Luca over Harden when they're similar players and Harden's averaging, you know, seven because more Harden points? Harden has a better all-around team to me than Luca does. Harden has a lot of. Harden has a team built for him. Luca's Luca is. I don't in, know. Westbrook's Luca's in year really, one. Westbrook's Luca not is, doing well. I disagree with that. Russ is playing his role. That's what you want him to do. Missing shots. He's still playing his role. When has he ever made shots? That's a real last question. When he won MVP, when the when the when the fuck was Russell Westbrook ever making shots? <laughs> that's a real question. That's a, but that's he's the always point. been clanking it. He's by the way, Toronto's smoking you. Yeah, exactly. He's been he's always been clanking it. He's been clanking shots. That's what he does. But he's still going out there and he's playing well. He's playing well. He's so, playing with so pace. So and let me ask this: yes. Is that the best way for Houston to play then? If they know he's going to clank it, why don't they have him drive more and Harden spot up to shoot? He does. But but see, but the difference is, is that what you want you want Russ to be somebody different 
than than who he needs to be on his team. Russell Westbrook this year is giving you 22.1 points, 6.9 rebounds, and uh, 7.6. Uh, I'm sorry, 7.6 rebounds, 6.9 assists. Now his numbers are down. I will give you that he's shooting 39.7% from the field and 23.2% from the from that's the, really from the bad. Field. Man. I mean, I'm sorry from the three point range. But when you that's look a at, problem. No, it's that's not. That's a no, problem. This, this is why it's not a problem. In the playoffs, it is not, when you no, double this, team this is why it's not Harden a problem. and Westbrook can't make shots. This is why it's not a problem. Because last year they didn't play with any pace, bro. They, they, their pace is so much higher this year than it was last it's year. Top it's not even two, funny. Yeah, it's not like, like running that. Like last year they were a middle of the road pace team. Like, this year in terms of pace, They're they top are. Two. It's them and doubt them in Milwaukee, right? Yes. Last year in terms of pace, they were twenty six in the league in pace. Wow. This year in terms of pace, they're number two in the league in pace. So that's what Russell Westbrook does for you. He speeds the game up. It makes Harden's ability to score easier. Do you think in, in the playoffs th- they're gonna turn Harden to the spot up shooter? Harden spots up shoot. He just trails on. He just trails on the fast break, and Russ throws the ball back to him. He gets a wide open so three. So do you think in the playoffs, D'Antoni would have the cojones to bench Westbrook for a last possession where you know Harden's gonna have the ball and you just need your four best shooters around? Yeah. Who are those because that's the, the problem. If PJ Tucker's on the floor, then no, I'm not benching Russell Westbrook. But that's a problem because he's going to be left open, no, it's not. and a 23 percent shooter is not. I'm not. Your whole season I'm hinges on a 23 percent shooter. I'm not benching a former MVP who has three more years left on his contract in Houston when I'm on my last year and on. on so my you're going to lose Houston. the game having a guy with a one in four chance to make a I shot. Want, if I'm Mike D'Antoni, I want to keep my goddamn job. Hell yeah, I'm losing that game. Put Russell Westbrook ass on the floor. Russ mm-hmm. go make that goddamn shot. You money, I'm going to look that man in his eyes. I'm going to hit that man hard as hell on his chest. And I'm going to say, go make that goddamn shot. Do it. And he going to go out there and he going to hit that goddamn shot. They need to and get, if he clank yeah. it, we lose with it. They need to get Eric Gordon going, though. He will. He's been injured, so he'll be all right. He's been kind of in and out in terms of what he's been doing. But so, in terms of number four and five, I got Siakam number four, and I got LeBron number five. I think what LeBron has been doing has been crazy this year, but I do think that AD has taken away a lot from what LeBron has done. The Lakers um, are great. They are amazing. I still don't think that they're the best team in the NBA. I honestly don't think that the Lakers are a top three team in the NBA. Um, I, I, I honestly don't. I Luka's really, really good. I, I, personally, I personally think that – I personally think that Houston is a better team than the Lakers. I think that um, the Bucks are a better team than the Lakers. I think the Raptors are a better team than the Lakers. I think the Clippers are a better team than the Lakers. I think the Lakers are the fifth best team in the in the league. It, you know, when it comes to actual playoff series, me putting them in a matchup against people. Um, but final thoughts. Let's go ahead. What are your final thoughts? Um, you know, for the show, and also as we get ready to get out of here, what do you think about the NBA wanting to change up the rules, do an in season tournament? Um, you know, James Harden was quoting this saying, um, you know, you know, you know, we not in college or, you know, you know, this ain't college. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole play in tournament and all this stuff as it pertains to that? Well, I think the ratings are down. Right. Yeah. And you see a lot on social media about it. And so a lot of the media is saying they need to shorten the season, um, which we've talked about. I mean, that would make each game matter more. I mean, that's just math. Right. The less games, the more important each yeah. game is. I think the league's trying. They're admitting that's a problem. But they're not willing to lose money by shortening the season. So they're trying to throw out all these other ideas to say, yeah. hey, we're addressing the issue. But it's not – at the end of the day, unless you lower the amount of games, it doesn't yeah. actually address it. I do think a midseason tournament, if you had the right incentives, could be fun. Like if you took the bottom 10 teams and said you're playing a tournament and the winner gets the number one pick, like that's good television. And I think teams yeah, would but, try yeah, for but, that. Yeah, but then again, but the players in the first, But that's bottom 10 in the first half of the season. Though. Right. That's the thing. I think – I will say, though, a lot of people on Twitter are saying you're just going to see the G League teams play if they do that. That I disagree with because the games still count towards your record. So yeah. why would you play yeah. a G League team? The game yeah. still counts. So I look at it like I agree that it's not, it's not a solution to yeah. lowering the season. But all these people saying – the G League teams are going to play. It's a joke. I disagree with that because it's still a regular season game, so it's no different than it is now. At worst, it's the same as now. Yeah. At best, yeah. you at least create a little bit of hype. Movies, I, guess. I think. Yeah, I mean, you, look, look, at, look, look. That, if you're the Orlando Magic and you're losing year after year, and you play in this midseason tournament and you somehow get really hot and go to the finals, like, look. I think the fans would get. I think Magic fans would be excited. Like it's not nothing. Like you're still getting a trophy. If you do that midseason tournament, you would have to. 
you would have to put up like a, 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 a top four seed in in each conference up. Like you would have to put up one, like one guaranteed top four seed. Because you know how it's three divisions or whatever that, that you know for like the playoffs. Like the winner the, gets yeah, a top yeah, four I mean, seed. Yeah, like that winner guaranteed at worst gets that fourth seed. You know. What and I what mean? if the winner doesn't even make the playoffs? So what? They're still so in. what? They won the tournament. Yeah, and that's they, on, and, and that's you, my and point. If you are, and if you are number five seed, then that's great for you then, because you can beat the shit yeah, out of them. That's my point. You you have to have the right incentives. The money won't be enough because these players are paid so much. It can't be money. It's got to be like you said, like an automatic berth of the playoffs, or like a, a certain like a top four pick in the draft. But even then, yeah, I was curious. Do you think players on the team care about the pick? Or they just care about their. Career. They don't care about the pick. I, I think I think an auto playoff berth would be dope. I think if if you if you're LeBron and you're the Lakers, and let's just say you want to try to rest a little bit more right. going into the season or or after the midseason tournament, then like if you win your division, you get an automatic like like basically what they're saying is like if you win that midseason tournament in your division, you get an automatic playoff berth. That means that three of the playoff teams are already going to be set in uh, for each conference. So now the rest of the teams got to try to catch up with those three to try to make the playoffs. So now it's only five spots. So now that makes it a little bit more contentious. And now if you want those top ten, I mean, if you want the top eight teams, you still got to – you might be in the playoffs, but your seeding can still be bad. You can still you can still lose home court, like that kind of stuff. That would be interesting because yeah. if I'm a team like the Lakers, I go for the midseason tournament and try to win that to get the playoff versus and then we can rest LeBron year after year for like 20 games after that. Right. I agree. I don't think it solves how the, the season may be too long, but I think it's worth a shot. And I think the people saying it's like a joke, you yeah. know, I think they're being a little bit dramatic. Yeah, I agree. But anyways, it's been Hoops and Brews, man. It's your boy TPJ. Pavy is not here. Um, he was back in Chicago handling some personal business. So shout out to, uh, you know, Pavy. Prayers for him and his family and all of those guys, man. Um, you know, you know, we love all of you. Shout out to Pavy, man. Shout out to Chicago. Shout out to the homie Scott. We are doing a live show in Los Angeles on December 21st at the Down and Out Bar um, from 3 to 7 with the homies from the Courtside Radio. Shout out to the homie Michael. Shout out to people at the Good News Radio Station as well. We will be doing a combo live podcast so you'll be able to see me and Pavy in person. That's December 21st, uh, 3 to 7 p.m. at the down and out bar downtown los angeles we will also be hopefully doing something in chicago for all-star weekend as well um eli thank you for coming through hoops and brews i appreciate it man i'll be at that show too yes 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 so come meet eli come meet uh you know you know the coach as they call him on twitter eli thank you for coming through hoops and brews man i appreciate it man talk to the people let them know where they can find you at um on the internet um yeah man let's yeah that's it at coach horowitz 13 on twitter and ig um yeah, check it out. All right, cool, man. And as always, man, it's been Hoops and Brews. Don't drink and drive. Make sure, as always, you drink responsibly. If you are over the age of 21 or you are under the age of 18 in Canada, you better not be fucking drinking. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. Don't do it. And as always, drink in moderation. As always, follow us at on um, you know on the internet at Hoops and Brews. That's Hoops, the letter N, the word Brews. Make sure you go to HoopsandBrews.com, HoopsandBrews.com. Make sure you check out the new HoopsandBrews.com, H&B Sports. We got different people contributing articles to the site. We're hoping to promote other you know, bloggers and stuff. So as I said before, our site does not monetize. But if you want to get your article up, we are a publication. We are a credential publication. So if you want to get your article up, get it seen by some more people than it probably would have been seen before, you can always feel free to hit us up, send us a DM. We will be happy to repost your article on our site. Shout out to everybody out there. Also, make sure you go and you check out my um, articles after every Clippers game. I always post post-game videos, post-game interviews, post-game pictures, as well as my live actual game notes from the game. I take notes as the game goes. And as always, make sure you subscribe. You follow us on Instagram. Um, and you also subscribe on SoundCloud, um, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartMedia. If you like Player FM, go on that as well. And make sure you retweet this link when you see it on Twitter. And as always, um, until next time, we will get up with you guys. I appreciate it. And don't forget... Just like I just gotta make sure that nobody just like the can forget this. Luca!